Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G97 and welcome to the episode. In this episode, as we celebrate hitting a milestone of reaching over 2,500 subscribers, which I really thank you all of you guys for your support for the channel, um, being able to reach the goal, which means a lot to me. Uh, I'm going to be using the Nissan R33 V-Spec at Tokyo Expressway. I'm going to share both the stock engine build and a swap engine build for this two for one combo. Uh, so in this particular episode, I'll be showing you guys where to find this car and be mainly going through steps for both the regular stock engine build and the engine swap. So I'll be covering basically everything you basically need to know about this car and the build itself. So hopefully uh, when this episode is over with, if you either try both runs or one of the two, um, hopefully this will help you a lot, especially that very, uh, very challenging Tokyo 600 uh, grind race. But uh, without no further ado, let's get straight into the episode. So, if you guys want to know how to find this car, is right now for limited time at the used car dealership. It's going to be quite at the bottom of the list, and here's a quick look at the stats if you're curious what this car has at its total stats. And overall, the car looks pretty good. It's an all wheel drive all build drive train which is a big plus especially for Tokyo Expressway turbocharger aspiration uh, 319 horsepower 314 pounds of torque the car is a little bit on the hefty side of ride route 3300 pounds but uh, since we got some points to play with we'll be able to put some upgrades uh, on the car since we're going to do the original engine build first uh, putting out some upgrades to this car and see if we can make it very competitive at its 600 point criteria so that's how you get the car what you're going to do after you're going to grab the car is you're going to move over to GT Auto, the car and maintenance service menu. And we're going to go ahead and purchase for a small fee the wide body kit because it's going to help us a lot, especially around the corners um, at Tokyo Expressway. So just pay a small fee of 25,000 credits uh, just for the small little upgrade. And sometimes when you get a wide body, it may or may not uh, add or lower your points. So there's also a pretty uh, good chance that it might do one of the two it's going to add some points so it might actually help with the handling um so that's going to be the next stage after that we're going to go ahead and check out the livery now if you guys want to follow me in the game jeffrey g 7 yt that way if you want to pretty much copy the same livers i do show on my episodes you can go ahead and follow me just go to my news feed page and um i'll have it on my news feed that way it'll be a little easier for you guys to access through it rather than just manually have to search it but Here's a pretty cool livery that I was able to actually make, and for this particular livery, it's actually a IRL uh, dirt race car that one of my friends in one of my racing leagues actually owns, um, or did own, for a time. So it's pretty close. I think the color blue, I think I probably should have went more of a royal blue color, uh, but I just like how it looks. Um, I was able to add some custom decals, and it looks like something you see from the early 90s like an Ocker series. Um, so I really liked how it turned out. If you guys want to check out the livery, those are the main hashtags on the front, up the top of the screen. Uh, now if you're curious what the parts are for this car, just in case you do, do not want the livery, but you would rather have the parts instead, no problem. I'll be able to quickly share that with you right now. So starting off with the wheels, uh, as we go down to our own wheels, uh, it's going to be the BBS LM. It doesn't matter which color of LM rims you pick. Um, I just specifically chose mine to be orange for delivery. And what you're going to do is you're going to keep the diameter at 17 inch and have both the width and the offset to make sure both of those settings are set to wide uh, for the rims. After you get that done, you're going to go to the custom parts. The front is going to be type A. After that, the side is going to be type A as well. Um, for the rear, we're actually going to have a rear diffuser in the car, so it's going to be rear B. And then for the wing, it's going to be type A. Um, there's no real cage in the car, so if you guys would like to also copy the front grille per se, you're more welcome to do that. But those are the main custom parts right there. As you guys can see, there's no roll cage bar like I mentioned before. And that's it for the parts that will affect your car uh, points at GT Auto. So let's go ahead and start with our first setup build. Uh, the first thing, as you can see, we got ourselves Sport Hard tires as our main compound. Suspension, we're going to keep it stock normal so no need to buy it. Differential is going to be fully customized. It's going to be 5 for torque, 25 for the acceleration, and then 30 uh, for braking sensitivity. Uh, we're going to have the torque factoring sensor in our car. It's going to be at 25.75 is where I recommend having it set on. 
Aerodynamics, 50 for the front, so make sure it's all the way down to the lowest number. The rear, vice versa, 310, max it out. Fully customized manual transmission, the transmission that's under the semi-racing uh, category. You're going to have your top speed kilometer reach at 340. Uh, no need to manually adjust it. For the next part, we got ourselves a high RPM turbocharger. It's going to be the red, the really good turbocharger. Racing muffler. As we go to the far right of the screen, we got ourselves a racing clutch and flywheel and weight reduction stage one and two, and that's gonna be it for the whole build. So I went more of a weight reduction handling kind of base setup, even though we do actually do have a high RPM turbocharger. But uh, just to see how good this car is, um, I would say the car is really good. I I will put the car overall uh, once we get through the main straight at least. Maybe the second fastest car on the field when it comes to straight line speed, but I'm talking about a margin, like a very close to P1. Uh, at least, give or take, about 5,000 of a second behind. So we're very close to the main being the main uh, fastest car on the straights. But handling wise, this car actually does feel pretty good. Um, feels pretty nice. Uh, in this car, so I think with the help of the rear diffuser, it actually does help a good bit uh, for the car to actually have some kind of handling aspect. Um, also, it seems like the older gen GTR seems to handle a little bit better uh, than the newer ones, but then again, it could be because of what, ha what parts I have on the, on the newer GTRs. But as we make our way through the field, um, I, like I said, the handling is really good, good acceleration really good speed we're making up some spots on the the main track we're gonna make some more time on this group right here as we got battle for p4 between the impreza and the gtr we're going to make a way through we're going to kind of find a way around the impreza we actually hit the wall so we won't have enough room we're going to make a move right here and it does work very nicely to our advantage but it gets going to come right back at us uh, but we do actually do get the move done right there and then right in front of us we have the rear mara and the older Gen Supra right in front of us as we head to that very tricky right hand turn. But thankfully, since we got ourselves a all wheel drive car, usually the all wheel drives actually do pretty well in this particular corner since we see the rear mirror really toasting that last corner, just really badly cooked it and almost came back and hit us <laughs> at the end of the corner. But we're gonna get ourselves some slipstream uh, from the Supra, it's gonna give us a little bit of uh, speed advantage over the rear mirror, and we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves. Uh, another spot get ourselves p2 as we're gonna get uh p2 as we cross finish to start finish line and we got ourselves quite a tasty battle behind us three wide uh in the first lap so first lap 220 uh took us a another lap just to get caught up with the honda nsx and you can see the car actually does have some really good grip the first sector uh easily in purple and the this corner we're going to gain a lot more time on the honda as well going that underpass you can see we can gain a lot more time on the Honda and we're just gonna find our way to get around the Honda that's the next uh, thing to do we're going to get our nose right there we're gonna make some contact we're gonna shove it out of the way accidentally and unfortunately that is gonna cost us our clearance bonus which is actually quite uh, you know I mean yeah I probably could have done cleaner but you know being at an awkward spot uh, but we still got the move done uh, we're going ahead now fast forward to the it's going to be lap four it's going to be a hot lap so i want you guys to watch this hot lap see what this car can do and then i'll see you guys when we get to our pit stop
So here we are at lap 7, we did 207.7, which is I thought was a pretty decently good lap time. Um, but I know cars can do, go faster than that. Coming pit road, uh, the tires are still in good shape, so all I'll be doing here is getting fuel for the car only. Um, I'm probably going to add just enough fuel, passing that little diamond icon, we're going to get enough fuel just to finish off the race, there's no need to fill up the car all the way up with fuel uh, because we've wasted time and then plus we'll be putting some weight back on the car. Um, so yeah, we're going to just add enough fuel until we pass the little icon right there, just like you see right there, and that do some more time trial laps and that's going to be it for our first run at Tucker Expressway with the R33. But the car did very well and uh, it felt good too. And uh, yeah, as you guys can see, we actually did a little bit faster lap on lap 9. But I feel like lap 4 was probably a better example just to show you. But as we get this race finished, it's going to be a 26 19. So, not too bad of a time. Um, even though there are some cars I know personally that can do a little bit quicker uh, than the R3A3. But still, really good result. Pretty quick. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be it uh, for the first race uh, with this car, with the R3A3. So, not too bad of a job for the car. Um, kind of has that same pace a little bit for the AI that are set to normal. I got to notice that a good bit. Uh, but you know, still did the job. A job well done. So if you guys want to try this combination out, you're more than welcome to do that. So, let's go ahead and get ourselves ready up for the next particular build. And so here we are at the GT Auto again. As you see, we got the wide body installed. Now, our main focus is going to be this 1.1 million engine swap. And actually, I if I'm wrong about if might be right, but I think there was a time that this engine swap was a lot more expensive, like 1.7 D5 million. I could be wrong. It might I might be thinking of the wrong engine, but 1.1 million, not too bad of a, of a price right there for the swap. Um, it's going to be the R92 CP Lamar prototype engine swap for this car. Um, as you can see, it's going to bring a lot of good buffs. So, if you choose to race this at Le Mans or Tokyo Expressway or even Sardina, um, this is going to be quite a impressive, huge game changer um, whenever you do this particular build in these races. So, now in order for you to buy one, you have to be collectible 50, which is that red or that hot pink uh, magenta circle right on top of the screen uh, that says collector level. Once you reach that level you can buy certain engine swaps for certain cars and that goes the same way for certain ultimate parts at the tune shop. Um, but let's say if you're not yet level 50 in the game, let's say you're about the mid 40s or high 40s, almost level 50. If you're curious on how to get a free engine swap or get a voucher, I'll go ahead and show that to you right now. And unfortunately, I do not have the reckon, the same engine to really show you, but I can, however, give you the explanation how it works. So in the game, you'll be able to collect engines during the game, and you can see I have them all right here in my shop. Um, now, the one thing to look out for is you're looking for a lit up, highlighted taskbar. Um, and then one thing you're looking out for is on the top right corner of that taskbar is going to be the word compatible. Um, I'll put my, put my cursor at the border with say kebabel. Once you see that, just select it. It'll ask you, it'll have a huge paragraph letting you know what's going to happen when you do this. Say install twice, say yes twice, and then just like that, you get yourself a free voucher. That's the alternate way of getting the swap if you not have, if you're not yet level 50. Now for the new, well the swap build, I actually went ahead and changed the rear bumper to the center parts. That's the only thing I did with the swap build. So keep that in mind if you're planning on doing the swap. Make sure you have the rear set to standard and you're good to go. Now for the setup for the swapped engine. I uh, basically kept everything the same except I have the torque factoring sensor. It's no longer stock. I don't have it anymore. The other thing I did change of course is the power restrictor to down to 78 since we got the new engine. And we moved our transmission to 350 uh, for the total top speed and that's about it. So as we get ready with this race uh, you'll begin to see that there's a huge difference with this particular build than the first build. And I can already tell that the acceleration is actually a bit better. Not only that but also the top speed is going to be a lot better too. Uh, we actually put down a good many really good strong competitive lap times in this particular race as well. 
as you can see we're making up to the field pretty quickly it looks like similar to the first race um, but yeah you can see we were able to easily pass the Porsche on that first race we actually did have to battle the Porsche for a little bit and then finally made a way to make a move on the Porsche now one thing that actually is pretty cool about this setup is that I could actually feel that this car actually did feel a bit better handling wise than it was previously with the other build so if you want to try to take a risk and see if you take off that rear diffuser on that first run and if it feels if the car feels better handling than what I just showed you earlier in the episode you're welcome to try that um, because the car actually did feel a bit more oversteer a little bit but it was in a good way I actually can force the car to actually get a good rotation turn in the corner no signs of understeer whatsoever I was able to put down the throttle earlier in some of the corners and was able to really be able to get back on the power a lot sooner too which really felt really good and you can already see we're already in P4 we're gonna make a move on the Impreza uh, we're gonna try to anyway we're gonna get P3 momentarily we're gonna have a bow for it and then it's gonna come right back at us we're gonna get contact uh, but since we got ourselves a prototype engine going down the hill uh, we're going to take retake P3 away from the Impreza and get ourselves quite a good run on the older Supra we're going to align ourselves as we enter that last turn uh, we both actually overcooked the turner a little bit but we're going to early shift get ourselves to the second gear then third gear try to get ourselves a good momentum out of that last corner which we actually do we're going to get a easy P2 as we move aside from the Supra and this first lap is also going to be a little bit faster too uh, than our first standard engine swap run. So as we cross the finish line in this particular run, it's actually going to be a 219.5. So we actually did pick up a good bit of time uh, with the swap build than we did with, with the original stock build. And for this car to be at, it, at its stocked weight, that actually is pretty good. And as you guys can see, the speed right close to 200 miles per hour. Uh, which can confirm that this car is legitimately the fastest car on the main straights in this race. And handling, like I said, the handling is really good. First turn, the car is planted, stick to the track. Uh, like, no signs of any understeer whatsoever or the car bobbling out. I mean, it just felt really, really good uh, in these turns. And we actually will have a very good shot. Uh, to actually take the lead from the leader and you can just see the car actually has really good grip too being able to have all four wheels below that white line that first turn and you can see there's a race leader down there down the road but uh, these our favorite sector sector two we're going to gain amounts huge amounts of time on the race leader uh, so it should be probably at the end of the lap we should have a chance to maybe take the lead earlier than what we did on the first race and you can see we're actually gaining lots more time on the Honda we actually see the HUD of the race leader uh, again in purple sectors as well and we're going to get a little bit of dirty air uh, through these next couple corners but it's not going to affect the car not too bad thankfully um, it's just knowing navigating the car through certain turns if you can just find a way to get, get a lot of time it's going to help you a lot so as we go down that right hand turn we're going to break we're going to try to find ourselves you know try to get ourselves a good spot we're going to out turn out break to Honda get ourselves a sharp right hand turn we're going to follow the Honda get that nice toe from the Honda as well and then just like we did the lap prior with the Supra we're going to pass it on the inside and easily take the lead away as we finish up lap two um, so we're actually able to get the lead a lot earlier than we did in the first one so let's we'll go ahead now fast forward to lap four this is going to be our confirmed fastest lap of the race. I just want to show you guys how fast this car really is with the swap build. And so I'm going to let you guys watch this lap. And then I'll see you guys when we get to the end of the finish line.
So it's been the yeah, 206.5, which I thought was a pretty good lap time. Um, since we had the prototype engine, we did not have to worry about pitting, which was great. Um, and we were able to do a very good overall tunnel time of 25.37, which is actually very quick uh, at this racetrack. I mean, very quick. Uh, able to put down, uh, only had nine la uh, cars on the lead lap, so we actually were put out able to put a couple of the AI drivers a lap down. So this car very quick. Um, if you do have the swapped, really recommend trying it out. And if you still have any issues with it, then I just recommend just doing it at Le Mans because this car is a literal beast um, for straight line speed and for exertion. Got ourselves a clearance bonus, and that's going to be it for this episode. So here is a preview for the next episode. We're going to use be the McLaren P1 GTR race car at Sardina. Had a request to do this build, so that's going to be the next episode. But if you guys want to check out the last episode, I did cover using the Scudo Monster at Sardina. You can click on the field right there. Hopefully that'll be a pickup to you too as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode, and thank you guys again for supporting the channel for so long because we've reached 2,500 subs. Really appreciate our you know, support. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night or might be, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.